Leo, fill everybody in on the situation. Well, it seems like an old friend of ours. Uh, well, an old friend of mine. I don't know. But, uh, you know, we performed. We all performed in New York together. But Am- Emily Hagen is a little upset. Well, I don't know. Yeah, she's upset that you unfollowed her on Instagram. Emily Hagen, for those of you who don't know, she also goes by Emily Knows Everything. Right. I did two podcasts at her place for her podcast channel, whatever the fuck that channel is. Emily Knows Everything. She didn't release the first one because she had some sort of freak out, thought it was offensive, didn't like how she came off. So I drive across town, spend money on gas, parking meters, not to mention the opportunity cost of me going all the way up to Hollywood. Gotcha. We spend, what, two hours on her couch? Yeah. For content for us to use and she, send our fans to. She heavily flirted with you. That's something that we have to address. She heavily flirted with me. Yeah. After the podcast, which we both thought went well, she buries it. She fucking buries it. She she has in her grasp literally fucking gold. It's worth the same amount as gold. A Danny Mullen podcast? What about the second appearance? Yeah, then the second appearance happened also. And then she, she, assure, yeah. she assures me that she's not going to do the same thing. This one's going to appear on the internet, yes. unedited. This was in early 2019, by the way, about yeah. a year ago. Right. She texts me the second I leave her curb after recording the podcast. Mm-hmm. Danny, I'm freaking out how this comes off. Oh, my God. Just please let me cut out some parts where we got into inappropriate discussions. And I said something to the effect of, Emily, you're overreacting. And you said no. you wouldn't do this. And then she comes back with, you seem like you're manipulating me right now. Oh, my God. She we- accused me of that. Were you manipulating her? Not at all. I was just oh, trying to get her to follow through some, on her promise. Some would say that there was... A little bit of that cunning Danny Mullen time involved. There was not. Involved. And I raised my hand to the heavens, Leo, when I tell you this. You don't even believe in God. I said to the heavens. I didn't say okay, God okay. is up there. Okay, okay, I am okay. a North mythology follower. Gotcha. North, myth- North mythology. I was raising it to Norse? Wo- okay. Wooten or whatever. The f- what did I say? North? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I get it. Did, so, I, did I say Norse? Did Apollo? I speak? No, you, you North mythology? I, said, I meant to say Norse. Oh, Norse. Okay, Norse. Yeah, I heard Norse. Maybe, maybe you got a bunch of earwax in your ears. Oh, fuck or you. maybe I, I misspoke because I do that before. a lot. But anyway, uh, so okay, I get it. So She censored two of my podcasts. Then she put out that second one, heavily edited. Right. Processed like kitty litter on her channel. It was about a quarter of the length that it actually was in real time. Were you offended of the way you came off on the podcast? No, <laughs> I just people were pissed that because I actually performed well that day. And it would have yeah. been something my fans would have liked. So I posted it unedited on my right. channel. Then she told me a month later she was applying for a job gotcha. and couldn't have that up on the internet. So she made me take it down. Gotcha. That's bullshit. You think this has anything to do with the fact that while her boyfriend was there, she pointed over and said, Danny's the kind of guy. I used to bang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that Remember might have that? to do with it. Remember when she said that? What's her boyfriend's name? Stencil. Stencil. Good old Stencil. She has a boyfriend named Stencil, which is something out of a Cartoon Network late night cartoon. And then who's her other buddy? Star Child? Yeah, well, you you actually were responsible for their downfall. Did you know that? Are they broken up? Yeah, they never really re like they never fixed the relationship after you basically started making fun of the guy. Is that what happened? I can't be too respectful when I'm in the presence of two guys named Starchild and Stencil. Gotcha. So, so yeah, I might have made a couple jabs. So you're being your Danny Mullen self, yeah. causing problems everywhere. I mean, this podcast is my fucking relationship with my roommate. It's fucked because of this podcast. Because of something you said too, buddy. We should call this the Leo and Danny wrecking ball. Oh God, it is a wrecking ball. But guys, it's entertainment. So. Now it comes to the fucking she wants to call you and confront you on the Leo and Danny show Uh, about 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 why I unfollowed her on Instagram. Yes. And the reason I unfollowed her on Instagram, I'll explain it to her face. The real question should be, why would I continue to follow her on Instagram? So that's what I'm going to post. Let me me get this straight. You're not entertained by her post. For those of you who haven't seen Emily knows everything in her Instagram just picture all the worst that TikTok has to offer, all the worst that kids who aspire to be Disney Channel stars, who don't want to offend anybody with their videos or posts, who are trying to be cute and please everybody in Hollywood, on the internet and beyond. Just picture all that shit, which you know if you watch my channel, you know I hate all of it. That is... Emily knows everything's Instagram to a T. Well, quick, Jesus, Danny. Wow, that was fucking a lot. That's what it is. Okay, well, yeah. Hey, man, you're entitled to her to your opinion, but, uh, you know, you could just mute someone's fucking posts and still follow them. I don't know how to do any of that. God damn it. You really, you don't even, I need to, we need to do an Instagram class for you. What did you lecture me on when we were yeah, in Joshua he was, Tree? He has, 
only posted pictures on his page that were completely unedited. He doesn't use any of the, the tools that Instagram gives you to spruce up a picture. I mean, this guy's having posted or viewed by 50,000 people, and he's just sending them into the abyss without being edited? Are you out of your mind? Leo's a master of the contrast, the brightness, yeah. the mysterious hue dial. I, I will make He's it a master pop. of the you hue will, dial. You won't know why you're looking at a page, but you will You will stay there a lot longer. You know, it could, it could be great, man. I don't know how to do any of that, so I sometimes I go with, like, the Calderon filter, and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of nifty. Jesus, I know you, you, of course you use the actual filters already preset for Hell you. Hell yeah. I no, use you the have to create your own filter. You go to the bottom. Every photograph is different. You have to create your own filter on the bottom. Leo, yeah, this is this is yeah, this is part of what I'm I teach. busy creating shit. I get it. You know who worries a, about their filters? Emily oh, knows everything. God, get her on the horn. There we go. Okay. Get her on the horn. We're calling Emily. She might she might take the nicer. If she's nice, don't be too don't be too gnarly. I'll all right, adjust accordingly. I'm okay. not here to piss anybody off. Leo told me about this literally when he walked through the door. I did. I did. I've was, had five minutes to prepare. Yeah. Okay. The dial or not prepare. She's gonna be excited to answer. <sighs> Stop. What's up, Emily? It's Leo and Danny here on the Leo and Danny show. We want to say hello. How, How are you that? doing today? I'm just watching this video of Hillary Duff freaking out at a black guy. That's nice. Where, that's where she gets her inspiration. Oh, Hillary Duff that, videos. Danny says that that's where you get your inspiration. Yeah, I don't want to be cunty like Hillary Duff ever. Wait, what is she doing to a black guy? What is she doing she, to a black guy? She, she was at a park and some black guy was taking photos and she accused him of stalking her children and started wow. name dropping her her like followers and like started a huge fight with him. It's like, oh, we'll figure it out. Wow, that, that seems pretty cool. I usually react to the same when I see a black guy photographing Jesus in a park. Jesus Christ, Danny. Oh, you, that they is have no right. Ridiculous. Why would you say that? <laughs> I don't even see All the right, connection. Let's come, let's come. All right, let's, let's go to the chase. Yeah, yeah, Emily. Let's to the real issue yeah, here. why are you calling? Danny, why the fuck did you unfollow me on Instagram? There it is. There it is, guys. There it is. Drama. Emily, first of all, he hello, darling. Hello. Maybe the best way to pose this, Emily, is with a question here directed at you. Do you, you think? Do that. <laughs> That's my move, <laughs> Emily. If you want me to, I'll refollow you. But I just want to ask: Do you think the content you tend to post on Instagram is funny? I don't. I've been posting TikToks. Do you think that is a good thing? Well, okay. I noticed that the unfollow came after TikTok. However, you <laughs> follow a lot of girls that aren't funny, and I do think my stand-up set crushed more than yours did in New York. And I did post that. Oh my so, god! And so a lot of your fans would agree. So in that regard, I would say I do post funny stand-up clips. You know what, Emily? But I was too drunk. <laughs> In New York to remember who stand-up set crushed more. He, he was on Quaaludes. You were too worried in the back shaking, as Bill said, because you're nervous. And that's fine, so it was like your first time. Yeah, no, I was definitely nervous. It was a big show. I was a little intoxicated. <laughs> you know, I don't remember who set crushed or who set didn't crush. The point here is who... The point about here is, listen, my videos aren't as good as... My on the street videos are not at the level of yours. And it's because I deal with anxiety and depression and I don't have the drive that you have. Oh, oh at least you wow. missed that. But I do think that I don't just... I need to know what video was so real. unfunny that you unfollowed me. I don't remember which one it was specifically, Emily. But when Leo walked in the door, told me that, hey, Emily knows everything's a little pissed you unfollowed her. I had to review what your Instagram was even like. The first two videos I watched, one was you with your face painted blue dancing in an elevator. Yes. And then the door opens. Listen, I'm going to describe it into the mic with you away from the mic here. And then the door opens and two people walk into the elevator and you stop dancing. I don't get the punchline. I don't get the concept. I don't get why that was something you felt the need to post at all. They, well, that one actually went viral on TikTok. <laughs> that just proves my point even more. If it goes viral on TikTok, I'm guaranteed to hate it. I was Listen, I was doing blue face and they walked in and they said, what are you doing? And they said, what is TikTok? And I said, TikTok is an app where people do really bad dance moves. That was it. That was the punchline. So Emily, you don't think it's funny. I know you don't think it's funny. So why are you posting it? Do you have no artistic integrity? I do think that one's funny, but I don't think that you understand TikTok because you don't have a following on there, which I get because that's literally the opposite. Emily, you. you can't jab me with my my set killed listen, harder. Listen, okay, listen to me. Okay, listen to me. You got to stop for a second, Emily. You don't get to lob. You don't get to lob jabs like you don't have followers on TikTok. Your stand-up set didn't kill. I'm a professional comedian, and you are not. So that's not true. How much money do you make on comedy every month? Stand-up, like 
maybe fifty dollars. Wow! On TikTok, how much are you making on TikTok, Emily? What's what driving you to make these videos? A hundred an ad. So you're how many of these ads do you post per month? Plus, I have a lot of men that give me money, which is no <laughs> which is not a comedy career. I'm just going to point that out. I think you're smart enough well, to know yeah, that, though. You don't know that because I'm not posting my ass, so they're po they're giving me money for something. Emily, plus or minus four hundred and thirty-two dollars. What do you make a month? coming at my comedy career that's not why you unfollowed me let's get to the real reason we've already got to the real reason you post stupid tiktoks on your instagram and i don't want to no. see that bull it's ever since i posted tiktoks they're they suck emily they're not funny you know they're not funny you're going down some path because you think it's going to please people and get you to blow up and that's why your followers don't give a shit and you're dead broke when it comes to comedy and you gotta get guys to pay your bills. Yeah. That's why. Are you still a caterer? No, I make six grand a month for my comedy career, Ooh, babe. Lexington. I don't believe that the slightest bit. Yeah, you're you're absolutely wrong, and I will show you the return on my taxes if you want. I doubt you're claiming all of that. I'm gonna claim a lot of expenses because those are sky high too. First of all, I'm a chick, so I shouldn't even have to be at the level of comedy as a man. That's a good attitude. Great attitude to have as a professional comedian. You shouldn't even hold me to a standard. And I wonder why sexism exists. You post, you follow a lot of other chicks that they don't post funny content and you kept following them. And they're not yeah. that hot. Well, they keep their mouths shut and they push their titties up. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, not all of them do. Christ, Danny. <laughs> Emily, I don't know what the argument is here. Do you want to move on to the other video I watched today of you? You dancing in the bookstore? This the is... Bookstore one got more comments than anything. Again, Emily, the, bookstore... the reaction in the view... One... What? The bookstore one, I look fat. I'll admit it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're I'm ugly. I think you're an attractive girl. I think you're a cool girl. I like you. I just think you, people like Andrew Judge TV. Oh, why is Andrew involved? Stop involving Andrew. That is enough with Andrew. What? Andrew is the reason I'm on TikTok when I'm on TikTok. Yeah, well, Andrew Judge TV lives at his parents' house and has to edit Leo's videos for fucking chicken feed. Hey. I pay him well. Mistake. Why aren't you on TikTok? And I said, because I hate TikTok. Emily. He goes, no, trust me. It's a great app. And he goes, I get millions of views. Yeah. So I trusted him, and now I'm on it, and now I got unfollowed by great. you and others. Emily, here's what I'm saying. At some point, we comedians have to follow our inner compass of what's funny what's not funny what's cool and what's not cool i'm gonna pull the phone away whenever you start talking when i'm talking so other people don't hear you on our podcast you and the bozo brigade are like tumbleweeds on the highway andrew judge tv tells you tiktok's cool fucking so-and-so cunty cunt tells you you gotta do a makeup tutorial so you oh do it God. that douchebag on your twitch feed when i did your podcast who was telling you not to get into those offensive topics because they were going to reduce your advertiser revenue guess what emily i do make 6k a month that's not a fucking joke my patreon because people love my content so much they're actually willing to contribute my merchandise because people respect what I do and they're willing to pull out their Visa, Amex, or Discover card to support the operation. That's a feeling you're not going to know if you continue to go down the road on which you are driving. You hear me? I'm done with you. I'm done. I hung up on her. That's great, dude. Listen, uh, okay, let's debrief. Uh, Can we silence this so she doesn't call back? Yeah, she's not. Dude, what do you mean? It's already. I, I haven't had my phone on since NOM, dude. It's fucking always on silent. I've never heard a phone call. I've never heard a ringtone come out of that thing. Good boy. Listen, um, okay. So uh, Smoked? Some people, yeah, you, obviously you smoked her. Some people would look at that and say that Danny was being mean. Or, and then some people would look at that and say Danny was giving her a very important lesson in life. When you give a fuck about what other people think, it's not good for you. Nope. You have to stop giving a fuck what other people yep. think and do what's right in your heart. You know, do what's right, what you think is right, what you think is funny in this case. It's yeah. It's okay. probably the single I biggest that too, skill, lesson, what it's probably yeah. the secret to life. It is a secret to life. It prob the guys who want to get more chicks, yeah. Stop being stop moving with the herd. Stop yeah. wearing Abercrombie and Fitch, getting yep. a crew cut, joining a fraternity. Be yourself. Be well, a fraternity is actually good for pussy. Yeah, it is good great for pussy. And guys fun. who want to get rich, stop thinking going to a college and working for somebody else is the way to get rich. Right. 
There are so many examples of where following your internal compass yeah. is the correct play. I've been doing it since 2012. Yeah. It's been really hard. I put my, I've put in my time in hell, though, and now I'm a professional comedian. And that time in hell is not easy, and most people will give up during that time in hell. But if you fight through that time in hell, then something beautiful comes at the end. At the uh, well, when you get out of hell, I guess. Look, my blood is boiling. I know, buddy. I know that was good though. That's good shit, right? Absolutely, that was yeah, great yeah. content. Good stuff. Look, uh, yeah, we can move on to something lighter, uh, I guess, if you want. Yeah. What did you do this weekend, my fine Leo? Oh, uh, what did I do this weekend? Uh, I fooled around with my girlfriend I, uh, and your mistress. No, mistress wasn't involved. Um, when you say fooled around, did you not make it to sex? Was it strictly actually, hand wait, stuff? Yeah, wait, yeah, no, it was. Uh, it was all the way. We went all the way this weekend. Yeah, I had sex with my girlfriend. Congratulations, this yeah, thank Leo! You, man. It's been a while. What has it been? Four it, or five months? It's at least. Yeah, it's been like four or five hours, and uh, yeah, it's already getting kind of gnarly for me. But yeah, no, that was fun. I uh, I feel like I did something. Oh yeah, I watched the Fury Wilder fight, which sucks because I'm a Fury. I'm not. At the house, so we had some people over. For Mitch that. is Leo's roommate. Mrs. Yeah, you've you know our relationship sucks now because of you, but it's fine. Leo's talking nice. about when we discussed his roommate Mitch and whether or not he was pussy whipped by this new Latina girl yeah. was brought into his life. Yeah, and it's it's you know it, it's going more towards the you know the the fact that he probably is pussy whipped. How, your okay. relationship has it been repaired at all? Have you made no, an effort man. to talk to him? I have made an effort to talk to him, and I think he's just like really you know distraught. With the fact that I would like bring him up in a negative fashion on this podcast, but it wasn't a negative uh, fashion. It wasn't negative in my like it, in the way I was presenting it was not negative. I was upset that my good friend that I look in a high regard is possibly being taken very very harshly by this Peruvian gold digger who he met on a gold digging app. That's all it is. It's like a, I don't want my buddy to be gold digged. That's it. It's not fucking crazy. The truth will get you in trouble oftentimes. Yes, and that's that's a fact, man. It really does get you in trouble. <laughs> I just want it. I think you can still bridge the gap. Yeah, I and know, definitely. It's so shitty to have to find a new place to live, new roommates. You don't need that stress no, no, no. right now, Leo. He is, he's the best roommate you can imagine. He's also really good for comedy. I can bounce ideas off him. I always have. He's very funny, innately. Just a innately funny guy. So... It's difficult to, uh, yeah, to say that I want to move. I would never want to move out, but that it could get down to that if, if it got like out of control, you know. Which whatever. People need to realize that other people in their lives are something that you shouldn't just discard with carelessly, unless their name is Emily knows everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I try never to. I have it written down on my goal sheet for this year that I want everybody who's in my life right now to be in my life at the end of the year. That's nice. And I'm going to work hard to make that happen. The one person who ha isn't with me anymore that was with me at the beginning of this operation was cameraman Nate. Yeah. And cameraman Nate, he stopped filming at the uh, hitting on guys aggressively video. Mm -hmm. He recently emailed me nice. and trying to get back into the crew. Well, that's cool. If you if Nico can't make it or you need a guy on a Tuesday or Thursday or some shit, maybe you can give him a shot. I know. Are you kidding? Know, I'm sorry. What? I'm just saying, man, maybe, you know. Everybody, America's the you know the place. You get a second and a third chance sometimes. Can I tell the story of what Nate has been up to since he left the squad? Shit, if you want, man. Yeah. It's a pretty interesting story. So let me go from the start. Okay. The reason we got rid of Nate is he was frequently coming down from drugs when we'd pick him up for shoots on Sunday or when he got to our place from an Uber for shoots mm -hmm. on Sunday. Would you say it was like having Rat Dick Ralph as a cameraman? It was like Rat Dick Ralph without the sunny personality. Ooh. It was like Rat Dick Ralph on a rainy day. Gotcha. Rat Dick Ralph on a rainy day could be a scary sight. Boy, a, a, a rainy wild. day of his soul. Whew, that would be a dark place. But he, we, he saw the Reaper and he was still having a great time. That's true. Nate had no <laughs> such resilience. Nate not only was coming down from drugs, I'd look okay. into the rearview mirror sometimes. I remember specifically on the way to Santa Barbara, I looked into the rearview mirror. This was for the picking up girls in a chicken suit video. Mm -hmm. He was nodding out. His eyes were rolling back into his head like he was trying to meditate or something. Gotcha. But I know it was just a heroin high, a methamphetamine bender. Mm -hmm. I had, couldn't confirm it yet. I couldn't confirm it until I looked at his Reddit after he was fired. On his Reddit, he's a member of methamphetamine support groups. Oh, wow. He's a member of gambling addict support groups. Gotcha. Because a lot of times he would have people like Fanjerry or Inlanigi drop him off at card games after he shot. Gotcha. 
he would do things like talk shit on the channel, talk shit on my comedy to me while we were shooting, yeah. which is the biggest possible distraction ever. Yeah, 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 that's a big distraction. I know. Yeah, I, it's I, yeah. It, it's like one of Russell Wilson's wide receivers walking up to him before a snap and be like, "Hey, you're gonna miss this throw." Yeah, that's about as bad as it gets. I get it. He would do stuff like that, and then also the biggest thing for me is he would frequently forget to hit the record button on the camera during shoots when shit was going on. Yeah, which is. Maybe the number one most important thing a camera guy can do is press record. Ben, correct me if I'm wrong. If you didn't press record on our mics right now, we'd be in trouble, right? That would suck, Danny. It wouldn't be good. Ben's like, oh, shit. So after eight times of not recording, and I'm not exaggerating, yeah. eight, I gently told Nate that I was going to look for another cameraman to work in. I wasn't right. even going to fire him. I was just right. going to get another cameraman to work Remember in. To work in, right? And that became Nico, who's, I mean, he's great, too, but he's, he's kind of a faggot. But other than that, he's completely Big fine. faggot. Yeah, huge, huge faggot. But other than that... Other than that, great guy. Great kid. Nate blew up on me. What happened was he has no idea how to win friends or influence people or talk to people yeah. just in a generally pleasant way. So when I suggested lightly that I was going to work somebody else in and still keep him in the rotation, he called me a devilish piece of shit who hides his putrid eyes behind sunglasses, who has no talent and has no... Uh, what do you say? He said no... Um, metaphysical value he said gotcha. I had no meta you, which we all know is a lie he said you have no metaphysical value that's what he said dude yeah right you're you absolutely have a lot of metaphysical value Ben buddy. what do you think about my metaphysical value oh I think you're missing the best thing that Nate said to you what did he say do you remember what he said you should be more in your videos compassionate yes he was oh he did say you, that Danny that's what I'm there for the compassion sometimes you know when we want to leave it in and I can confirm that yeah when I saw him post on the Reddit, the subreddit, Danny Mullen, this was last June, he was talking about how I was a huge piece of shit and a sociopath, and how Leo, though while he was a blue pillar, yeah, or whatever the gone. pill in the Matrix is that he makes you just go back blue, to sleep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he said while you were a big blue pillar, yeah. you were also a great person because you gave a homeless guy $100 yeah, in Barstow. Like, come on, guys. Which... As if just giving people doesn't make, money... Doesn't make you a good person. Harvey Weinstein was a massive donor to all yeah. kinds of things. I'm a horrible person, to be completely honest. That's what he said. And you always pitch me ideas. Danny, you need to give people give things to homeless people downtown and make people think you're compassionate. I'm so selfish. No! Yeah. We have enough hypocrites in this world, be they in Hollywood yes. or D.C., yes. giving shit away in order to make people think they're good. Right. I would never take care of an animal. Yeah. Ever. Bill Clinton's got his foundation, but you know what? He's still fucking 10-year-olds on the airship Lolita. You think they Is were, he a good they, guy? You think they were 10 or like 16, 17? They were definitely under 16. Oh, that is disgusting. So, what else is Nate been up to? Fuck. I, I, if, you, if you went into pedophilia right now, I'd, from the, that Bill Clinton comment, that would be hilarious. No, I have no idea. If he, it wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. But So, what else does he do? He started up a new channel with this guy. Who? And he kept posting the, Reddit, the videos on the subreddit. This kid named Chris and him. And when I saw the videos, I thought to myself, these look eerily familiar, but I'm not sure why. And it took me... Until December, when I looked at Nate's old Reddit account just for shits and giggles, that I saw he was the cameraman for some new guy who you could tell Nate was just coaching this guy on how to rip off Danny Mullen tropes. Wow. And all the videos were like staging fake fights, like telling people to go fuck themselves, doing a character with like a little intro in the beginning. Any traction? No, no traction, other than a couple of mildly interested people in the Danny Mullen subreddit who liked it because it was basically a Danny Mullen knockoff. Sure, sure. But then apparently the kid told Nate to go fuck himself and they stopped uploading videos, at which point Nate came back to me and emailed me saying he wants to come back to the crew. But I looked at his post history and every other post is him talking shit about me, talking shit about Nelk, talking shit about Inland Iggy. He's just been talking shit about me all fucking year. And now he wants me to overlook all that and go be joy and, and carefree as we do comedy in the streets of Los Angeles. Yeah, it's not an easy job. We need everyone to be as positive as absolutely possible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Leo. Yeah. This weekend, I was up in Santa Barbara relaxing mm. with my chick. The emus. I saw the emus. I've got the concept for our next video. Oh, boy. Two words. Fairy tales. Oh, my God. Are we talking Midsummer Night's Dream type shit? Well, that's a play. I know, but I mean, like, you know, like, he, they were on psychedelics in that. 
You should, yeah, look, they were, yeah. I'm talking fairy tales in the classical sense. Okay, I like Grimm this. Brothers, Ooh. Hans Christian Andersen, I believe, more specifically, mm, is the nice. one I'm going to focus on. Okay. Leo, I felt like I was on psychedelics the weekend day when I had this idea, Saturday. Sorry. Oh, my God. I okay. said that too complexly. So we go see, in Santa Barbara, this farm that's full of ostriches. Mm-hmm. My chick Mia is like, oh, Danny, they're big birds. So you feed them. Really? Is that what? I tune her out when she talks. Oh, my God. I just heard that ostrich is... and I got excited. She doesn't have any interesting ideas ever? She's like an old radio on an FM station in the oh, background my... while I'm in my wood shop God. working on a chair. Just like that completely fake, just, how's everybody doing today? Uh, hopefully, it's a nice, uh, you enjoying that 75 degree weather in LA? Yeah, like that? exactly. That's what it Nicely. is. Nice, Leo, you know. You know the Shit. reference. Yeah, there you go. No, I kid, I kid. I don't tune her out completely, <laughs> only 80% of the time. 80%, gotcha. We go to this ostrich farm together. All I could think the whole time when we're holding out the what it is, it's a dustpan with mm-hmm. a bowl super glued to it so you can hold it out at a safe distance and it's full of pellets while an ostrich, which is taller than you and I, Leo, yeah, and probably weighs the same. I feel like they could fuck you up huh? while they peck pep, these little pellets out of your right. hand. Right. All I could think the whole time is we need to get Rat Dick's head full of acid and make him go over the side into the ostrich cage. Oh, that would be unbelievable. Yeah, imagine him getting absolutely attacked by fucking ostriches. That's where it could get a little dicey because I think he would yeah. die. Well, we could go in and save him. I'm a stunt man. We could do this. We could yeah. do this. And I think there are other than some of them emus. Leo, at Waterworld, did they teach you how to subdue an ostrich? Well, no, buddy, but I'm, you know, I, I know about safety. I know at least to keep the right distance where if he's dying, I could attack and save him at the last minute. I also know CPR, and I'm I'm 100. Uh, I'm also a lifeguard just yeah. in case there's water there or something. Do you know how to patch up a gaping wound in somebody's well, side? If, if we, dude, I don't caused think by a fucking six inch just, talon. Uh, other, if unless it's completely chopped off, where we need a tourniquet. Other, you just put pressure on any wound. It's not that big a deal. Leo, their feet look like Velociraptor feet. They look really. They are obviously part reptilian, but I I don't know, man. I wouldn't go in there, but he will for sure. So we'll see what happens. And my, anyway, uh, if he if he goes down, I mean, he died happy. Am I sitting next to Charles Darwin right now? I didn't know you uh, knew the origin of the ostrich. It's reptilian, huh? Maybe. Mm, okay. We'll see. You were on the beagle? I, I could have just made that up. You Danny. explored the Galapagos? I, I the, the dodo bird, if you like flightless birds, that would have been your favorite. They're just fat fucks. And I they know would about, just, you know, you know about the dodo story. I know story. about the dodo. They would make great rape subjects. Oh, my God. They would, fa- they would fuck them? Probably, I'm sure Wait, somebody, a, some somebody Dutch settler, a dodo, absolutely. But I, I, dude, have you seen a dodo? It's a fucked up bird, dude. You that, haven't seen a dodo. It, it has a heavy bottom. Well, none of us have really. We've only yeah. seen drawings of dodos. Yeah. You know what? This is going to be a controversial take. Yeah. I think the dodo would be good for a skull fuck. Have you seen their beaks? What the fuck? Not a skull fuck. Have you seen their beaks? If anything, doggy style, because they're fucking heavy set, dude, because they were they didn't have any natural predators, so they were just walking around like they were the bosses, dude. I'd grab a dodo by the neck and use it to beat the shit out of another dodo. What the fuck? You would have done the most fucked up things to dodos. Dude, if we had discovered dodos like in this world, you would have made a Danny Mullen video where me, you, and Leniggy, and Rat Dick Roth go and terrorize dodos just kill dodos just fuck dodos up like in Leniggy, we would have, he would have tried like 50 times with an arrow and then finally just like gotten stuck in its neck because he could have never hit it dude i would stick an m80 up a dodo's ass what so the fast fuck is wrong with you man <laughs> i'd be there just going jesus danny every time a, a fucking dodo blows up that'd be the most fucked up video ever so we're at this ostrich place I think at that point that the trip is basically done we're going back to santa barbara to lay yeah. around watch tv and have sex yeah my girlfriend tells me, no, 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 no. Let's keep going to this little village called Slovang, I think uh, it is. Solvang. Solvang? Fucking, dude, that's a great place. That's like a little Dutch community, huh? It's like weird. I got there, it's and so I cool. immediately felt like I was hallucinating. Yeah, dude, it's like it's like you were in the, the Shire, bro. You were at the in the Shire. For people who aren't aware of this, Dutch people, I know, I hate the idea too. They came to America in the <laughs> 1800s. They were mostly in the Midwest, yeah. but a little colony of them decided to branch off, head out to California to escape the winters. They settled in Solvang. Is that how you say it? Solvang. S-O-L-V-A-N-G. They settled there in the early 1900s, 1911 or something. It's a nice place. And their community now, it's turned into this half tourist attraction, but half authentic Dutch village. A lot right. of the people working at the shops all spoke Dutch right. or Danish. I don't fucking yeah, yeah. know. I think it's Danish, yeah. I get there and I see because I've been playing with the idea of doing a fairy tale video for a long time now. Great, yeah. Whose bust is prominently on display in the town square? 
I don't remember that. I believe his name is Hans Christian Andersen. Wow. He's one of the most, maybe the most famous fairy famous, most famous fairy tale writers that exist. And the reason I say fairy tale writer is because the most famous collection of fairy tales is by the Grimm brothers. Mm. That's Cinderella. That's right. Hansel and Gretel. Those are all collected from German villagers, though. Oh, okay. The Grimm brothers went around and they collected oral stories. Oh, wow. So they got the drunkard with a boil on his nose who has a limp and a club foot. Tell they got story. him to recount the story of the fucking bitch sleeping in the castle. Why would that guy be the storyteller? Jesus. Why? He's well, deformed. When you are imagining a fucking 17th century or 18th century or whatever fucking... German villager telling you a story it's about monsters. Guy. It's a hundred percent that guy for exactly. sure. For sure. Exactly. So that's the most famous collection of stories. But Hans Christian Andersen is the most famous short story, fairy tale story writer. His works include The Emperor's New Clothes, mm. The Little Mermaid, Good one, Good one, The Ugly Duckling, okay. The Princess in the Pea. Okay, nice, good one. Stories that are in the popular consciousness. It's good stuff. I saw that. That was the connection I needed. We found a place to go to for the fairy tale episode. Yeah. And now I'm just working out the specifics of how I'm going to frame this. You want to be Snow White and everyone will all be in the seven dwarves, dude? We'll all be the dwarves, including Nico. I think we got seven almost. There's so many I things we ben can do. Has to come. Ben has to come for the seventh dwarf. And part of the challenge of this, and something I was very proud we were able to accomplish on that Apocalypse Now shoot, is how do you condense all the information into funny bits with a coherent story? Yeah, that's the tough thing, yeah. Without getting ahead of yourself or having like a five-day shoot and having 40 hours of footage. That's awesome, man. Yeah, have you... Uh, I as well have gone everywhere thinking about video ideas, man. It's like a thing that happens all the time i i was at this food festival i want to tell you this and there's at least i said a thousand it's probably closer to two thousand people there every sunday it's called smorgasbord in downtown la and i was thinking we bring rat dick ralph as like the hot wing king as like this like national champion hot winger guy yeah. and, then, and then he just can't take anything spicy at all just like we get him on the you know get him on the stuff and then he just goes nuts Throwing up everywhere. I don't know. Making a scene. You think he's going to be that good of an actor that he can really fake a reaction to hot food? <laughs> no, maybe not. Yeah. I was thinking about that for the fairy tale video because I have to decide, are we going to do just the Hans Christian Andersen, which I think is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Keep it focused. Who's going to be the little mermaid? Right. Who's going to be the ugly duckling? And I was thinking the only people right now I absolutely trust in the crew are you and Fan Jerry. Gotcha. As far as performing, yeah. in Lanigi, we might take him to the end of the dock and tell him he's going to jump in in a mermaid costume, and he'll nope. be like, no, go fuck yourselves. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, if, if in Lanigi, if you watch this and you want to actually jump off the dock in a fucking mermaid suit, merman suit, comment down below, because I'd, I'd be curious to know if you would do that right off the bat. But yeah, you're right, know. you're right. Everybody's got to do it. I mean, you know, I got the chops. I could, I could play the Little Mermaid. Here's my idea right now of how I want to do this. Or Poseidon. I want to start the video with me dressed as Hans Christian Andersen with some classical oh. music playing and a quill. Oh, God. With a voiceover. Once upon a time. Yes, yes. And I want to do that four times in the video and just drop in fa fairy tales where I comedically rewrite them. And then we do some kind of comedy skit. That's hilarious. For example, one of us comes out of a Target dressing room totally naked to parody the Emperor's New Clothes. That's not bad, yeah. The ugly ducklings going around trying to make friends in situations which are completely inappropriate to make friends. Like a rush the field at a soccer game in a duck costume and like That's a hilarious. Costa goalkeeper. That's hilarious. Um, yes. Shit like that. I think, I think there's a lot of potential here. And oh, then we do a vlog a of us time. going to Solvang or wherever, of us going to the ostrich place, yeah. dressed as fucking fairy tale people that's with awesome. Rattic Ralph on acid in the middle. Well, yeah, that sounds like a fucking recipe for success, bud. Yeah, it does. A survivalist also hits, hit me up. He wants to go up into the mountains and survive for 24 hours with our crew. Wow, that'd be awesome. I'll do We're it. doing it. Of course you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Think I would let you sit well? Oh, Producer Ben's going to come in there. Yeah, that would be great. No, I, I've always wanted to be a mountain man. I might do it without a jacket just to fucking prove a point. Just almost die. Fuck it. I was hanging out with my chick this weekend. Mm -hmm. You know what I've been doing? Having sex with her. Well, I've been doing a little bit of that. Nice. But the relationships finally come to the point. I stayed over for three nights this weekend. Shut the fuck fuck up you know what how happens? much cuddling is going on at night oh you would a lot vomit night. you would vomit if you saw what was going Dude, on you guys are little cuddle bugs man i saw you guys the other day man that's that was interesting to see you know what happens when you stay over for three nights though you get bored you got a shit in front of the other person oh my god did you do it absolutely twice and she was in the bathroom no that's but weird like, what do you mean my fucking girlfriend's nuts man she walks in 
while I'm taking a shit and just doesn't give a fuck. The point that I'm making, though, is I've reached the point of our relationship that's, that's where a, the first shits are being taken. That's unbelievable. Have you caught her taking a shit? I've been trying no. to catch, dude. It's She's so a hard. fairy. Yeah, it's, she doesn't shit, possibly? She masks it really well. Yeah, dude, they are quick about it, man. They I, think, I think girls just go in and fucking fire away and then just put it all away. Just that There's not even really a smell. I try to go in. I try to fucking catch her. I can't. It's tough. It's so tough. They're like quick. You can hire producer Ben to help you out. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah? Post him as a century in the shower with the oh, curtain closed. Oh, my God. Fuck, that would be crazy. All anyway. my... Re- all my relationships. I'm sorry, Leo, but no, they're all in the past. We've they've been long distancey right. after college or in right. college or, or places are so close. We're not right. really spending the night. This was the first time I've had to be like, "Hey, I need to go take a shit right now. I'm you gonna did, go you do it next." You let her know. Yeah, hell yeah. What'd she say? What go are we gonna do? It? Just disappear for? Did she give minutes? you some matches? Did she give you a little pep talk? Anything? No pep talk or matches. Did you? Were you able to get the second shit out? I really doubt it. I don't Absolutely. Think you, you I waited got around. Both out. I waited around for the aftershock. If, is that what you're referring so you, to? Yeah, you, the aftershock. You took it like a 10-minute shit. 15-minute shit. You took a 15-minute shit at her place? It's tough. And then you come out, and it's a little awkward afterwards. You're just like, huh. That's and un- you try to go back to regular. Why would it be that? Why would it be awkward? Just go back in. Have you ripped a fart in front of her yet? Or by nope, accident? Not on purpose. Okay, but maybe. Probably in my in. slumber. What do you do in the morning when you have to, like, fart? Do you just kind of lay it out, like, lay it in the... Do you Dutch oven it or whatever? Or do you... A Dutch oven, if I'm remembering correctly, is when you fart, and then you basically rape her with the blanket so oh, she has to okay, smell it. Yeah, yeah, no. But don't do that, Leo. I no, don't do you that. don't do that? No, okay. I do not, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm not that gassy because I eat the same thing all the time and gotcha. it's pretty gas-free. Gotcha, nice. When I get up there, I pig out, though. What do you eat? Leo, I kid you not when I say I'm putting away ice cream, pizza, gummy really? bears. Really? I'm a huge pizza Have you shit. been to that place, uh, that, that that Mexican place up there, the fucking Freebirds? I hate that thing. Why? It's pretty good. She was trying to get me to go there, and I said Chipotle, Chipotle makes Chipotle. a better burrito. No, it's not. Have you tried the Freebirds burrito? I've tried Freebirds burrito, and the Freebirds burrito should be free. That's what I think of it quality-wise. Oh it is, sucks. You like Chipotle? Every time I go to Chipotle, I have explosive diarrhea within like an hour and a half to two. That's because the burritos can sense your distrust. Well, I, I do. You know what I don't trust? The fact that Chipotle is owned by McDonald's, dude. It's owned by McDonald's. They McDonald's. Are shady, shady fucking company runs that place. You I'll know, say this. McDonald's is the best true fast food restaurant well, that exists. Of course, they're the best. They're the best at it. But, you know, what, they're putting fucking mad sodium in that shit to Look get at you me. addicted. Look at me, bitch. Yeah, I'm looking at you, have buddy. You, have you learned one thing from hanging out with me? Who do I like to associate with? The best. The winners, dude? The fucking winners? I'm going to start it. eating only McDonald's. Don't you dare do that, please. I, I like your complexion. You look very handsome. Supersize Mullen. Don't fucking supersize yourself, dude. Please. I couldn't handle you know fat Mullen. You know fucking ripped I'll be if I'm F- just dude. doing deadlifts and squats and eating and, and Big Macs? Mickey D's, dude? I won't be ripped, but I'll be huge. Fuck, dude. I couldn't handle fat Mullen, dude. If you got fat, dude, you'd be such a dick. What if I was fat and bald? Oh, my Would God. Would my comedy career be over? No, because you'd, you'd fucking grow out the stash. You'd be, if you were bald, you would be a Fu Manchu guy. I know for a fact you'd be a Fu Manchu guy. Why would you say that to me? I don't know. I feel like he would be. So you're saying that I would lean into it and just make myself yeah. as repulsive as possible? Exactly. You'd be like a biker, dude. You'd literally become a biker if you were fat. No, if, if I... If you were fat and bald, you'd be a fucking biker, dude. If I was bald, which no shame to any of you who are bald, it's genetic and you shouldn't be proud or not proud of being Listen, having hair. I have, I have a core, that thing that I always say to bald guys and I want to say it real quick. Fucking, fucking The Rock and... Jason Statham are fucking bald. Two of the biggest alphas in the world. That's fucking two. And the other one, Jason Statham's 5'7". What the fuck is your excuse? What is your excuse? It's true. Anyway, yeah. The big, some of the biggest alphas, Jordan, they're all bald, man. If you're bald, shave that shit and, and rock with it. Rock it, dude. It's it, an it could be, change your life, man. The, absolutely. Yeah. Get in shape. Shave your head. Yeah. If you're in shape and you're hygienic... You're, you're going to get some pussy. Yep. If you're in shape, you're hygienic, and you dress well, you're going to get some more pussy. If you're in shape, hygienic, you dress well, and you're a little bit of a renaissance man and know a little bit about a lot of things, you're going to get even more pussy. A Wikipedia man. I was talking to Mia about that, my girlfriend, this weekend. My goal is to be no ace of any trade, but a jack of all. I, I love Wikipedia. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Oh. You are a jack of many trades, I'll tell you. There are some gaps in my knowledge, and I was saying this to her. Yeah, sure. When people start talking to me about the Roman Empire, the Greeks, 
I can't give you a good breakdown right now of why Greek and Roman culture is important to our shit. I'll be like, oh yeah, George Washington had to read Latin in school and they learned about Plato and therefore like the Constitution. That's going to be my breakdown of why classic civilizations are important. Gotcha. I'll be like, oh yeah, Shakespeare, he read the fucking Iliad. I don't know. I don't like that. I'm not proud of my ignorance. I'm not Emily Knows Everything. Have you read the Iliad? I have it on my shelf. I bought it this winter and I haven't read it. I actually see a lot of Greek mythology all around, like you, you do a lot of the uh, the. Uh, you have like Plato in your collection as well, right? I have Plato on my shelf. Yeah, that's what I mean. You haven't read either. I'm talking about Plato, the the, the plenty. Oh, you have Plato. Yeah. Nice. I what just, do you do with that? I, I just sculpt penises. I knew and you'd I, be sculpting penises. For and sure. then what I do is I make sure the specifications are identical to my own penis. Gotcha. And I take them out onto the streets, no camera, not for video content, right. and I ask people if they think this is a nice shaped penis and a nice size penis. Gotcha. Do you ever uh, ever receive with any kind of ill will? Uh, do people get angry? There was one time when I visited a Jehovah's Witness church with one. Gotcha. No, the idea gotcha. there being, it's like, uh, you're, you're asking, who did this once? I think it was Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters recorded a bunch of songs and said it was some other band. Or I think he said it was, who did this? Somebody recorded a bunch of songs and said it was rancid and then showed it to their friends to get an opinion on their music. To get an opinion on that person's own music, that's what I do with the Play-Doh sculptures of my penis. Nice, man. Wow. So you're almost like one of those black guys trying to sell his hip-hop mixtape on the street. It's almost. the same. Or none of this is true, and I just went way too far with the play on words of Play-Doh and Plato. <laughs> the point remains, though. I'm not proud of my ignorance about a bunch of topics. Right. So if you, you learn, keep your fucking ears open and read, man. I guess, I guess we're getting a lot of people reading, man, which is cool. People send me books that they've picked up that I don't even remember mentioning a lot on Twitter. Yeah, well, that's fucking the best. That's great. I'm glad we're uh, we're putting that out there because it's it's accurate, guys. You got to read, man. It's a gold mine to read even more. I don't read enough. Tell me something embarrassing. I just told you I had shit in front of my girlfriend for the first time. Well, dude, she, unfortunately, me and my girlfriend, it's it, I think because we grew up in the, a similar household, the uh, she has just crashed every embarrassing barrier. Um, I had a, on the way up here. I was I, I gave a ride to Santa Barbara on Sunday, and I had to pull over and take a shit at a Courtyard Marriott, man. And uh, she was dying, laughing her ass off. Uh, Why'd you give her a two? So you went on a four-hour round trip to drop her off somewhere? Uh, well, yeah, I had to pick her up. Her car's in the uh, shop, so I needed to see her, and I did. Why didn't you just go hang out up there? Well, she lives with a roommate in the same room. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. It'd be great if she let me, if she let her watch. But, you know, she do, isn't really comfortable letting her watch us have sex. And or I'm also gigantic and like, I just take up so much room. Big. I take up a lot of room, man, wherever I am. And especially in that little tiny dorm in Santa Barbara, man. It's, she doesn't have her own room. She's, she's sharing with a Spaniard girl from uh, Barcelona. And yeah, it would be fantastic uh, if, Leo, she, if she wanted me to. Tell me the that. truth right now. Are you attracted to the Spanish roommate? No, not really. To be honest, no. I'm not. What about the rest of the girls your girlfriend hangs out with? Um, I am not physically attracted to a lot of the girls that are in the house because they're a little, uh, you know, dr- they look like they party a little bit too much. And, I'll say it right uh, now, Mia's got really hot friends, my chick. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, You'd be I, stupid that I want to fuck her friends. I, she has, well, to, my girlfriend had, I mean. Yeah, Leo's sure, going they, into lying been, mode right now. He's lying. <laughs> He's lying. There's been uh yeah, you know what? She has some attractive friends. I've never I, I wouldn't say equally attracted to my girlfriend, but yeah, I've 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 seen a few girls in the Santa Barbara area that I've thought were uh fine specimens. Nice. Way to really uh open your soul to the podcast audience yeah, there, yeah. Leo. I'll tell you what. My fucking me is roommates. She's got this one roommate named Meredith huh. who is bodied up. She'll walk out in shorts and a little t-shirt. Uh-huh. Just got a beautiful physique. I got. She's got her nipples pierced and shit. How do you know that? That's what Mia said. How do you know that, Danny? That's what Mia said. Have you seen him? Why don't you fucking say something on the podcast right now? Have you seen her roommate's tits? I'm making an honest confession, and you're trying to turn it around like I'm hiding something after you just fucking tap danced away from any honesty. I believe I did say that I did find some people around the Santa Barbara area attractive, Danny. I think that was the truth. Another confession. My uh, my uh, girlfriend Mia, she's got this other friend named Nikki. Uh-huh. Nikki is a smoking hot chick too. And when I first started hanging out with Mia, 
I remember we talked about it on the podcast. I didn't know if her and Nikki were trying to have a threesome with they, me. They probably were, but then the fact that you denied it made it so that now you and Mia have survived to the next level of the relationship. It's, well, very, it's very rock and roll of you. Well, I didn't really deny it. The next time I went up there, I was hammered. I was kind of putting my arm around both of them. Wow, you sick son of a bitch. I love it. And the girl, Nikki, is smoking hot, too. Pierce yeah. nipples also, I guess, just bodied up. Wow. All me as friends are just smoking hot. Bodied up? I don't know that term. That's got to be a NorCal thing. Just... I think I might have made it up on the fly. Okay, I don't know. I like it. I like That's kind of douchey. I don't like it. What yeah, I mean by bodied up fuck, is just dude. a body that you shape. you want to put your cock in that body. Jesus, Danny. So, yeah, so let me ask you. Let me. I'm going to tell you something now. Yeah. I think you're at a crossroads, buddy. If you rehash the threesome talk, she might invite other women into the bedroom I don't on want a that. semi-regular basis. I don't want that. What do you mean? Like two times a year, fucking Easter, Christmas? I don't want that because I listen to it. I'm acting like this is my own opinion, but I listen to enough love line to know that threesomes only destroy relationships. Yeah. And also I've had enough threesomes. You're good. I've told the story of the girl I double teamed with Foo, who I kind of liked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That relationship well, sunk I mean, like the Lusitania. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I mean, yeah, look, but you and Foo are stronger than ever. I was a little bit irritated with Foo afterwards, totally irrationally. He really? did nothing wrong. I invited him into the situation, but my primal jealous instincts that have been evolving over millions of years, mm -hmm. they came out and I tur almost turned on Foo. I almost gotcha. didn't like him because of that. Well, there is a way to avoid that. You just, you know, you have a threesome with another, with two girls. But then she's going to resent you when she sees you having sex with the chick who's not your girlfriend. Well, maybe she could just assist you in having sex with her and maybe just like maybe eat her pussy or something like that. That would be nice. It's wouldn't possible. It? Wouldn't that be nice, Ben? I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm just in a little sweet spot right now, but I see other hot chicks and I can appreciate the fuck out of them, but I do not desire other girls other than my girlfriend right now. That's nice, man. That's a great place to be, man. That's actually really cute. And some of the fans were dissuaded with you turning down a makeout session on the last video. They were dissatisfied. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. I agree with your actions, and I think that you're the most productive, Danny, when you have a nice girl to cuddle with. And those people, uh, they'll be happy to see I'm going to make out with a girl the next video I post. Well, the isn't Jasmine that great? Shit. Yes, there you go. I'll, I can still make out with girls. I just have to tell her about it. Or it has to be for obviously for content. Nice. A hot girl in the outfield trying to make out with me. There's a little bit too much of a connotation there for gotcha. me to just and start as, sucking. And as far as exposing yourself to men in your cock, that's completely okay. Oh, she oh, doesn't care. What kind of question is that? Of course, it's okay. I'm kidding. That's hilarious. I'm it's not whatever. whipped at all. I'm voluntarily in this relationship. Of course, I don't think you're whipped at all. But I truly can say that. I don't have any desire to go through my direct messages or hit up any of these girls or fuck them because I'm sexed out from the sex I do get. Yeah, there you go. And I know going out and chasing extra pussy is just going to make me less productive. Yep. Right. It's going to make me have shit to lie about and, and hide. And I can't let her see my phone because I'm afraid a notification is going to pop up from Chelsea in fucking Nevada. Gotcha. It just, it would be stress. I don't need my heart rate to go up any higher. She Dealing hasn't... with you knuckleheads every fucking weekend, it's already high yeah. enough. She had a nice ass though, Chelsea from Nevada. Chelsea from Nevada, I actually, I let her blow me. That was my yeah. that was my swan song to the promiscuous yeah, that lifestyle. It, huh? That's good, man. I'm glad you got out of your system. I, I completely support it. We're both in a relationship, and now Nico, he's in a, I guess he's in a relationship. Oh, I don't know. Who knows what Nico's in? Yeah, he's in. A, he's he thinks he's in one, I guess, but it's strange. It's 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 complicated. It's an it's complicated one. Ben, do you want to shed yeah, any more ben, light on your relationship? Are you in a relationship? No, I'm not in a relationship. It would be impossible for me to be in a relationship. He's just going to be all evasive. It's okay. Ben is uh, hes much like a politician when it comes to these things. Ben, any chance you want to sit over here and open up a little bit and tell us how things have progressed? Let's talk about I know you had the talk. You know, you had the talk. You could borrow my, my glasses if you want. No. Nah. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Plus, the last time, it took him a long time to fucking repair the damage that you do to families. You damage relationships. On this podcast, that's what you do, you fuck. I think Ben, actually I know Ben appreciated our talk because he told me in the kitchen the next morning <laughs> that he had established some clear boundaries. Just that's a, great. a brief recap. I'm, I'm really happy about that. I'm very, very happy about that. Ben is currently having sex with a girl who has a boyfriend. <laughs> Gotcha. The well, thing is, everyone know you did. Did you have to rehash it like that? Of course, you never know when somebody's watching a podcast or listening to a podcast for the first okay, time. But yeah, and then yeah, it's it's not a good sitch. 
But listen, we're all in the pursuit of the vagina, and it's not always so easy to find. So when you find one that you like that doesn't smell, that is well <laughs> kept, you keep it even if somebody else might actually have access to it. Right? Just because there's a garage with two fucking keys doesn't mean you can't have one of the keys and be one of the owners. Leo, master of analogy. I guess. The re- not the, really. The, what I'm saying, though, is... That, or <laughs> Additionally, what I want to say is that Ben is starting to have sex with this girl on a regular enough basis yeah. that I think he's probably starting to yeah. like her. There's laughter. There's there's cuddling. If there's laughter and cuddling, you're in trouble. Yeah. And I know there is. Right? Is there? There's laughter and cuddling. Yeah. Fuck, man. God, you're a producer of the fucking Leo and Danny show. We can't have you be fucking around with some devil girl. And we're just afraid that she's going to hurt your little heart without so much as a text message explaining what happened. Or you could have the angry boyfriend come over to the house and just crash into the fucking living room with his (laughs) Nissan Altima, just fucking fuming like, where's that motherfucker bed? And then Danny has to choke him out. No, no, no. I got my 38 for that motherfucker. You're going to just kill him if he does that? I'll kill. You'll fucking shoot him? Hey. What's the law? There's the law that you just shoot some motherfucker if he's inside your home. That's true. There is that law. I guess. Within that might, reasonable... That, that might be Nevada. No, no. It's everywhere, but it has to be reasonable. In other words, you can't uh, tell the mailman that you just ba- bake the new batch of warm cookies yeah. and bring him in the threshold and then shoot him in the head. That won't fly in a court gotcha, of law. Gotcha, gotcha. Unless you could prove that he just came in there, maybe like maybe maybe you could just fake prove that he came in like he broke in or something. Right? You want to try it out, Leo? Make a video out of it? Yeah, I'll, try, I'll make a video out of it. Okay. I'll shoot him with a Nerf gun, though. It's a it's a new year. I you've you've created some videos that you've really liked. How does Danny Mullen feel uh, about his year so far? Do you are you in a routine? Do you like your routine? Do you want to change anything? What's going on? Danny Mullen feels great. Not drinking. Waking up at right. six a.m. Hustling on the videos. I think people will agree they've never been better. They're unreal. Yeah, they're they're phenomenal. It's pretty hard to find anything. I broke and I looked at some of the comments on the Apocalypse Now video, yeah, no. which I almost never do. People love the video. It was great. Thank mm-hmm. you, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed that one. It's some of the That's best a, work. Some of my best work. We've done. <laughs> I saw one lone comment like, oh, the downward spiral of Danny Mullen's yeah, content continues. This is the me. worst video ever. It didn't bother me at all because right. I was like, okay, this dude is living in an alternate reality. Right. Obviously, the best stuff I've ever done has been the last couple of videos. Yes. Or the videos this year, notably Everyone, the jujitsu, yeah. the apocalypse, yeah. and the the iPhone blackface one, yeah. which got taken down recently, not for a community standards violation, but because the three girls from LMU filed a privacy complaint, and I called their bluff and tried to hold out on it, and it came down from the privacy complaint. Fucking awesome! What do you? How, why, what do they have to do to follow through on that? Just what do you mean what, once they do the privacy complaint and if you deny it do they have to then what happens was I thought there was enough evidence to show that their being on camera was consensual gotcha which meant that I thought me pointing at the camera and saying hey you girls are on YouTube right now huh yeah. it's super lit as my shitty YouTube prankster right, guy that was, that was consent I sure. thought that was consent because they hung around afterwards and didn't leave YouTube felt differently and took it down but what really got me steamed this weekend is I was hanging out with my girlfriend, just trying to feed some ostriches, hang out in a Dutch replica village and relax. I checked my email at one point, and I emailed YouTube saying, hey, doesn't that constitute consent? Was it really fair that this video with 208,000 views and a bunch of comments and likes has to come down? They respond, oh, no, it's been taken down for hateful and abusive content. What the fuck? At first, I started to panic. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. They did bring it down because it was inappropriate. I thought I stayed on the correct side of the line and was within my rights to post it, and it was totally okay. But then I realized, hey, there ain't no strikes on my account. I didn't get any emails explaining that I'd violated the community standards. So I look up who this girl is. Her name's Hanika. I write back, excuse me, Hanika, I just want to say that I think you have some wrong information here. No strike, no email explaining this, which is a mandatory part of getting a strike, because those things have to happen. It appears on your account, you get an email. Additionally, when I click on the video, it says it came down from a privacy violation, not from hate speech or for abusive content. I say, Hanika, how do you explain that? Hanika starts to get really defensive with me. Starts to say, well, I'm sorry, I don't have any more information at this time, okay? But I'll reiterate what I said in my last email, and it clicks. Oh my God, 
Hanika is a social justice warrior who didn't like the title of the video and is basically lying to me yeah. in order to discourage me from reposting the video after blurring the girl's faces, which I'm going to do and which is within my rights. There we go. YouTube, and I haven't decided if I want to blow this up and start tweeting at this girl, tweeting at Team YouTube, like, hey, you have a chick who's operating against company policy to suppress my content. The Italian in me would, would just say keep everything under wraps, but the American in you might want to blow it out of proportion. But, like, I mean, you know, YouTube's going well for you. They're not fucking with you much. I wouldn't, you know, make them aware of you. You know what I mean? They're going to be aware of me sooner or later. Oh, yeah, they're already aware of you, but, you know, you're still fucking, you know, getting doing whatever you want in videos. You figured out a lot of good uh, tactics. Don't fuck with it too much. I don't know. That's my opinion. That shouldn't be any kind of community standards violation. Ari <laughs> Shafir's got the amazing racist up. Yeah, no, no, they, there's on, plenty on YouTube. of shit. Sarah yeah. Silverman's doing blackface on YouTube. Yeah. It says right when the video starts, this is a parody. I wrote that on the iPhone blackface video. Yes, you did. It's a parody. It's smart humor. It's not us driving around in a beat up Ford Bronco calling people the N word. Yeah. That's not what it is. It's not us burning a cross outside a Baptist church. Jesus. Is that a video idea, though? Uh, it's already in the can. That's going to be coming nice, out this Thursday. Nice. That's I'm I'm, accept, I'm accepting one strike a month. That's that's going to be my new policy. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was just pretty frustrated with that. It threw off my focus, or rather my lack of focus, because I'm trying. I was trying to relax and not think about work. Gotcha. Because even the Danny Mullen needs his decompression time. Of course. Now March is approaching. Where's that? What's that uh, sobriety date you got? March 30th is when I told myself I could start drinking alcohol again. Will you start drinking alcohol again March 30th? I'm definitely not going to start drinking alcohol again. What I might do, though, is I might have one day where I drink. Yeah. I'm not going to say she's a bad influence, but my girlfriend is fucking 20 years old yeah, in college. Yeah, I know. So sometimes well, yeah, I feel yeah. like it would be nice to throw her a bone and go to a party and drink a little bit with her. Yeah, that would be great for her. I mean, you know, the sex might be a little more, more wild or whatever, you know? It gets pretty wild already. Oh, yeah? I was licking her ass in the shower this weekend. Nice. I fucked her in the ass. Jesus. I used her head like a fucking jackhammer on my penis, just grabbing her hair. Did you really? Oh, yeah. You sick bastard. Really taking advantage of your position of power, aren't you? Absolutely. Nice. No, I'm I'm very respectful. I never... I believe you only enter her in the missionary with a heavy eye contact. There's a deep, passionate kisses. You gently pull her hair back. You say sweet words into her ears, and then you gently, gently put your penis into her, correct? Always gently, Leo. Always gently. What's great, though, is that her and I have been having sex enough now that she's reached this familiarity threshold where she can come now within five minutes of having sex through just intercourse. Nice. Super you have, nice. You have the stamina to last the five minutes, which is great. Yeah, I'm not 16 anymore, Leo. What, so you can control yourself now? Or is it the T the level is a little on the lower side? I can last longer than five minutes of the sack. Is, that, is, that, is that a mental thing? What do you? Wait, let's teach the kids. How do you last long in the sack? What do you do? How do you get in that frame of mind? That's a tough one. It's been so long since this was a legitimate issue for me. But if I had to think back to the younger days... Kids, if you're having ejaculation trouble, just know <laughs> that once you get about past five minutes, the period of heightened sensitivity is going to diminish, and it's going to be wide open spaces. It, yeah. It's like the pressure valve on some sort of scientific right. instrument is in the red zone when you first start and for the first five or so minutes. Yeah. Once you get past that, you can go for another hour if you'd like. Now, uh, the thing is also that is a th uh, can be an issue. When you're younger, you also have sex with absolutely anyone, sometimes girls that you might not really be attracted to. And then that's why you don't last too long. It's because you really don't want to last long. But if there's a girl that you're looking at and you're really attracted to her, then it's you're going to last a long time because you can just... You know, take in the actual experience and not have to like think about somebody else or something. You know what I mean? I know you. I know you guys know what I mean. As Danny does. I don't really know what you mean. Yeah. Do you, do you ever think about someone else while you're having sex with someone? Everybody thinks about somebody else when they're having sex with someone. That's not always the case. Leo, the you probably imagine you're having sex with somebody else other than your girlfriend more often than you even look at your girlfriend. Look, it's everybody does on occasion, but I don't. I wouldn't say like someone else. I actually put myself in situations, and then I, I I can come from it. Like sometimes I think about having sex with her in front of all her friends. You've definitely had her flipped over on her stomach and pretended she was her Spanish roommate. 
Oh my god, no. Her Spanish roommate has absolutely no, no bod. In fact, it, it's like not round at all. She's very, very much like a yogi. Kind of like an Asian girl, like with no ass body. It, here's what she fantasized about. This is Leo's fantasy. All right, this, yeah, okay. We'll see. I'll, I'll tell you if you're accurate. If, you're, hey. if, you're accurate, if it's accurate, dude, I will fucking tip my hat to you. Since buddy. you're so into role plays, you're the Spanish yeah. girl. I'm you. Okay. Is this, you walk into the room? This and is the I'm, fantasy. Okay, good. Uh, the fantasy? I walk in, you're at your computer writing some shitty paper in Spanglish. Oh my god, it, it, what are you doing here? Christina is in the back for another couple of uh, hours. What are you doing Ooh, here so early? What's up? Uh, <laughs> no worries, you know, I was just uh, just uh, doing some deadlifts down at the gym. Uh, uh, what? I do not know what that means. <laughs> oh, you, just you see the, the, my fucking quads here, you, my fucking my hamstrings, yes, yes. and then in my back and the testosterone levels, I'm just, you know, fucking uh, yes. yoked. Yes, you, you're a very beautiful man. Nobody can deny that. This is very true. You are gorgeous. So, Christina is at her gender studies class until 3.30. Yes, usually she comes around back home around 3.45. Here's what I want you to do. I uh, want you to get down on your knees <sighs> like you're in a cathedral in Spain. Oh. And I want you to put this big, <laughs> you know, fat oh. dick in your mouth. That is so big. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's uh, yes, I it's will do that. full five and a half inches. Please don't tell Christina anything about this. And then you eventually, after you're, she's done sucking your dick, yeah. you in your head have her flipped over on her <clears> stomach <throat> and you're fucking her. And you pretend momentarily that you're fucking her, Christina's roommate and not Christina. I know you do that. That is so extravagant. I'm not 100% sure that I can say that I do that. But you know what, bud? I mean, you know, you're all entitled to your opinion. And if you think I do that, more power to you. You want an honest confession? Yeah, go I've ahead. had times when I've had trouble coming when I'm having sex with Mia because I've fucked her like six times that hour. Jesus, you've had, you've had sex? You've came six times in an hour recently? I came like five times from having sex with her this weekend. I know, but like not in one hour. Nah, Jesus, it's man. called. I was gonna say. I was gonna, I was gonna say there is. A, what are you on then? Because fucking, give me some of that. Yeah, and then I was lying to you. I'm usually yeah, yeah. But I, when she lived back at Slut Castle, I was fantasizing that one of her roommates came in and started licking my ass while I was fucking her. Nice. So it was easy to come at Slut Castle. Yeah. No, nice. Well, I can still just in my head, you know, it's a I fantasy. Was, yeah, it was. Uh, I can make my, her drive the 15 the, minutes. Yeah, the uh, the girlfriend, uh, her house last semester or last quarter. It, it, she was right next to like this girl that was always like in her room and she would always tell her like oh my god I heard you guys banging again so like I would really like it when she'd get like extra loud because I know that I knew that one of her you know she was listening Leo be honest with us all right now you fantasized that your girlfriend's orifice belonged to somebody else while you were pounding away Not belong I can't say belong to somebody else I just yes, add I add viewers nope. that's all I do nope. I add nope. viewers nope. it's healthy nope. Nope. you know nope. why because nope. I don't really watch pornography I don't really feel like I think that messes with your thinking sometimes you and I it, it's happened I guess i don't know i yeah, have to really think about that you're being bashful you're I being evasive have to, i'm not being evasive i'm being honest man i mean i'm sure it's happened i'll have to go ahead and say yeah it's this probably is... happened but i can't really like th it's not like a thing that happens a lot well at least you're admitting you've done it i wish you'd be a little more transparent I, what you're doing do you right now I, why do you think i'm not being transparent i've been so transparent on this podcast. i just told you that i fantasized about one of mia's roommates licking my ass while i was all right well i've fantasized about my girlfriend's roommates watching us having sex that not or the same kind of again. confession maybe my girlfriend could get mad at me from what i just confessed your girlfriend can't get mad at you she from what you get just get mad at that nope she's yes she can totally get mad at that nope she can easily get mad at that nope she probably will not get the same. mad at that. A tongue in the anus is not the same as a girl in the bleacher with a little finger, the foam finger. Well, watching. I've I've thought about girls licking her ass while I was having sex with her. Is that? Nope, you're lying. And maybe accidentally it's okay. my cock a little bit. All no? right, it's okay. You're lying. But you realize I, that you realize that both your girlfriend and my girlfriend have both pretended we were fifty cent and we had a way bigger dick. While okay, we were first of all, them. not fifty cent. Maybe they pretended. Uh, you know, it could have been some other role play. Maybe yours was like maybe some rock star that you resemble. I'd like to think that my girlfriend thought of me as a caveman or maybe a Greek nope. mythological beast nope. like Hercules nope. or maybe nope. Zeus. Nope. But no, there's been no NFL players that I don't think I'm going to get. No, you're so naive. Leo. Not. You're so naive. You thought it was possible that people could fall in love unconditionally, that you could just be a huge piece of shit for the rest of your life and your girlfriend or some other girl might still love you no matter how shitty you became. Absolutely. Not true. true. Not fucking true. Yeah. Everything depends on you putting in the work and you being a good person and a good mate for the long term. And also, of even if you do all that, there are still going to be times when your is. girlfriend pretends 
that you're a fucking massive black professional athlete slamming around there is not you. no proof, and I do not choose to believe that. There is that. proof. This is why that book came to be that should have never came to be, and there is no proof. Which and book? The book that about black the black penis that haunted you, and then you had to break up with that girl. Did you really just say the book, and you thought anybody would know what that meant? Well, it's yeah. People know the people on the podcast know about your books, uh, dude. Well, if you know about Danny's books, comment on down on below on the podcast. And if you well, haven't read it, if you haven't read it, shame on you. You should all read Danny's well, books. You. But you didn't say when your girlfriend bangs a black dude. You just said the book. Well, yeah, of course. I it's thought you were talking book. about Fifty Shades of Grey or some shit. I feel like the book is like your, the Danny Mullen book, dude. I like that you give it such reverence. It's a, it's a big it's a big deal. That book is uh, is a big part of your life. It is a fact, though. It's been studied that. Virtually everybody fantasizes their partner as somebody else. It's just it's yeah. well, a reality of being in a relationship. You got to break up right. the monotony somehow, yes. sometimes, and that'll happen from time to time. Sure, sure. There's a lot of language back and forth between me and my girlfriend. We dirty talk. So I know for a fact she's role playing. I mean, I've had to play. I've played her. I'm not talking about role playing. I'm talking about she thinks you're Curtis Jackson or Ja Rule. Why and she met you in a club? Why fucking Curtis Jackson and Ja Rule? Why? Because they're famous black dudes, and she probably grew up listening to their music, and she was probably attracted to them, and it we felt a little naughty no because proof. they had tattoos. And they didn't speak no, in the bro, Queen's I would, English. I honestly think if she did think about me being somebody else, it would be a European soccer player, much like Ronaldo or something. So you'd be okay with her pretending you were Ronaldo when she fucked? <laughs> no. I guess it. I know it, it. Rather than Fifty Cent, I would take Ronaldo over Fifty Cent. But so you're absolutely. a racist. Absolutely, that makes me a racist. Yes. No, I would just like her to be attracted to Ronaldo and not as much attracted to uh, Curtis Jackson. Because Curtis does that make Jackson, me, probably, it's not has. because of the color of his skin. He's a he's like a fifty year old dude. He's actually kind of fat. I'd prefer it if she was attracted to an absolute stud like Ronaldo. What is wrong with that? I'm not convinced you want him to be Ronaldo because you think Curtis Jackson's penis's circumference is about another Honestly, inch larger Ronaldo's than Ronaldo's is well fucking documented having a huge cock. Is it? Yeah. Isn't that a shame? That what dude is, has a huge cock too. Can, how can we confirm this? It's fucking online. Are you kidding me? There's a the site called pictures? John Hams. It's called like they rate cocks by John Hams and they go by rumors and like six John Hams or five John Hams. It's like the biggest cock you could have because John Ham was fucking hanging like a fucking horse. And if you can see it like on every picture everywhere. So there's a website that rates Cox and his was like really rated high. And then they talk to like prostitutes or like trannies because he fucks trannies. And, Ronaldo? Like, yeah, Ronaldo fucks trannies. Ben is producing an image. Danny Mullen's going to lay eyes on it. Look, dude, they even fucking put the bronze statue uh, having a huge cock because that dude has a huge cock, dude. This is the... L l there's no proof here. You're showing me a statue's well, penis? Well, a statue, but no, there's proof of his fucking cock. We, we ben. You've got to hit Stop. images. He just did bulge. Yeah, he did bulge, bulge but we could just... These guys just passed me like, a, an image of dude, a statue in Portugal. Cock, dude. Look at that thing. <laughs> that's not big at all. You can't tell that's big based on that. Actually, I didn't take a good look. Well, whatever, dude. What do you mean? No. Is that, that's... He has an average size cock, and I know he has an average size cock, because if his cock was big, the world would fall that? apart at the seams. What do you think of that? It could be big. It could fucking be big. He's a... What about there, bro? What about there? He's wearing a Speedo in this image, still, and it looks like a Ken it's still, doll. It's still creeping down, dude. No. What about, what, Ronaldo doesn't. What about that? That one's solid right there. What do you mean? It would be like a splitting of the atoms of the Earth's core if Ronaldo had a big penis. There's no way you get to be wealthy, <laughs> model handsome. The what, most followed human. The best athlete at what you do. Yeah, by far, really. Well, not by far. Lionel Messi. He was right at there. a time, right? At, at I don't a know. time, like there's been years where he's been absolutely the best by far. And yeah. to have a huge penis. There's got to well, be something wrong. Yeah, he's got to have testicular cancer, and there's like a fucking a, a uh, titanium he, testicle he, in there. He got accused of rape. His I mean, asshole's got to have some really bad genetic odor that he has to take a bunch of antibiotics to suppress all the time. Something is drastically wrong with Ronaldo. Well, we could. I mean, he fucks trannies. Maybe he's homosexual. How did you hear he fucked trannies? That's a, th a well-known fact in Europe. Like my buddy who follows his, the, all the soccer over there says that they, it comes out in the tabloids over there. Well, the tabloids, but it comes out. like It's it's one of those things like nobody talks about, like Tom Cruise being gay over here. Yeah, yeah. The, the Tom Cruise being gay over there is that Ronaldo fucks trannies from time to time. A buddy of mine... I'm not going to say who, but he was having sex with a really hot transgender chick post-op. And I looked at her Instagram, and I'm traditional. I wouldn't soberly have sex with a transgender girl. But if you were drunk... This one was pretty hot. It was really? a pretty hot transgender chick. But he told me he also got drunk and was on Tinder the other night, had a pre-op transgender girl over, and fucked her in the ass. Or wow. it in the ass. Wow. 
with a dick just fuck the chick in the ass. That's that's hardcore, man. That's very very hardcore. He could be a homosexual for sure. He gets chicks too. Well, of course, a lot of homosexuals get chicks, dude. They're great with chicks. In fact, homosexuals are fan- fucking some of the best ladies guys you could possibly know. I've, I've taken a lot from the homosexuals. In fact, that's not the same. They don't have sex with chicks. What it got me thinking though was Such an asshole, dude. I can't believe we've had talked. Dude, we, our, this podcast is fucking. All, I love it, dude. It's all over the place. But if you were transgendered, I feel like I would definitely keep my penis because if they make you a vagina and they chop your shit off, you could not feel the same. Yeah. Do you have an orgasm? What happens? Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah, apparently you do. How? I don't know, man. They they put like this. I don't know, dude. They you know what they they slice it in half your cock and then they make it and interior. They, 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 yeah, they they internally they fucking. So the head of your penis is called the glands. I'm assuming they make that the interior wall right, somehow. Right. So right. your penis head turns into like a, a funnel it's downward into your body. So scary, dude. That seems like a tremendous risk. Yeah. And when I watch Howard Stern, if you guys are at a computer, look this up. There's the hottest tranny contest on Stern, and it was on YouTube for a while. Howard Stern. Mm-hmm. They had girls talking about it, these transgender chicks. They were all hot, and a lot of them just decided to keep their fucking cock for that yeah, very why, reason. Why wouldn't you, man? Yeah, my buddy actually just sent me a Facebook video where it's like a really good-looking chick, and then she stands up and has a fucking huge dick. Those are quite flabbergasting when you see them. Yeah, I was watching... You know Adriana Chechik, the porn star? Yeah. Of course you do. I, mean, I don't really watch that much porn, but yes, I do know who she is. She's notorious or famous, however you want to look at it, for getting fucked in the ass by massive cocks. She's been triple analed. Jesus, dude. She'll lick anybody's ass any time of day. She'll do anything. She fucked a tranny girl, and the transgender girl was drop dead. Wow. Probably the hottest transgender chick I ever saw, but the transgender chick had an average cock. Okay. Because there's no way. Right. That would be like Ronaldo having a huge cock. Gotcha, gotcha. The earth would disintegrate from the core out yeah, yeah. if there were a beautiful transgender girl with a massive cock. Yeah. Because you know she would be like the highest paid porn star in the world. So did you reach ejaculation watching that video? It's okay to jerk off to a chick fucking a, a, tr- a transgender chick. Yeah, no, I, I didn't say it. What, you can jerk off to anything you want, buddy. If you've watched gay porn and jerked off to it, that's completely fine. What I'm saying is, I was just asking if you reach climax. I think I did jerk off to that video. Nice. Because I was watching, essentially, a dude with tits fuck yeah. a chick. Which is, honestly, many dreams have been just, you know, exactly that. It's strange, but it's valid. Yeah. However, if Adriana Chechik is swapped out with James Dean or Johnny Sins... You're gay. And then you wouldn't have masturbated to it? No, because that would have made me gay. That would not have made you gay. It would have made you a very, very progressive. Maybe. It would have made me a guy who jerks off the two penises, I'm one sure of which is going in the other one's I'm asshole. Not, if, if you're a, a gay follower, I'd like to know if you're a gay follower. That's an interesting thing to ask. No, can we ask if you're... If you're gay, would you say? Would you tell us? That's cool, man. There was a transgender chick who was a big fan of the channel for a while who'd comment on every. Yeah, video. There, I've I've definitely seen the transgender chicks. Uh, but yeah, no. If you're gay, I'd love to know if you're gay on the channel. That's cool. There was a time we the, could use some decorating. To be honest, oh my god, is that is that fucked up? Do they not like when you just assume that they can decorate? Are you really uh, worried about the, you stepping over the line with that joke, Leo? No, I'm what not. I'm just. I'm. I'm thinking. Like, gonna, is that a thing? You're gonna turn yourself into the thought police. If you, if you were homosexual, you're gonna you... apologize to the Huff Post over Twitter. Yeah, I will. Okay. No, I don't think they'd be offended by that. That's a very innocent joke. Gotcha. Yeah, there was a time though, <laughs> the golden age of YouTube comments yeah. was when I was around thirty to forty to fifty thousand subscribers. Yeah. That was the time when the like to dislike ratio would be. 2,000 upvotes and one downvote. Nice. Remember the video Amazing Transformation where you taught Iggy how to get pussy? Great video. That video for months and months had less than 10 downvotes. Wow. For months and months. But that was a time when there was actually a community in the comments. And yeah, there was a transgender chick who would comment all the fucking time. That's awesome. And I'd always like harder fucking There's no community at all now. It's just a bunch of randos. Well, the thing is you'll fucking go insane if you read the comments now. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. I mean... You get how many thousand per video now? 2,000 comments per video? Between 1,000 and 2,000. It's crazy. Man. Yeah, it's I mean... It's unreal. The, Thank you guys for being so fucking awesome. Yeah, and the thing is, the people who listen to this podcast are good dudes. They're yeah. they're loyal fans. They like the show. They appreciate that we're just trying to make them laugh, and that's right. all we care about. We're just trying to be your buddies at work, man, or your buddies on the road, or your buddies before fucking bed, whatever, man. We're just buddies. We're your buddies. But there are people also, because 
my main channel videos get picked up by the Discovery and the yeah. recommendation engines. There are people who came over from fucking Hannah Montana videos and started right. watching Danny Mullen shit. And now we're changing their fucking lives. Well, no, I'm saying that they're assholes. That yeah. they're like, oh, oh what gotcha. the fuck? This guy made a homophobic joke. This, that right there, that was insensitive to indigenous communities of Alaska. Gotcha. Those kinds of people. And then also you see... But that's good engagement sometimes too, right? Like you want that a little bit? I don't mind when I piss people yeah, off. I think that's a good thing. Like I saw, I heard that people, right. you these guys brought it up. Noah and Ben said that people were reacting negatively to the rat dick video. Yeah. And after they said that, I looked at some comments and I was like, these guys aren't Danny Mullen fans that are talking shit yeah. on the rat dick video. Yeah, I saw these that These guys too. are huge pussies. I saw that too, but I saw it from like a, a caring, some of the fans that were really big, like were like doing it from a caring standpoint and they were basically uh, you know, kind of accusing us of being not, like assholes, like to the a millionth degree, and we're like, dude, we didn't ruin anybody's life. Guy, those tattoos didn't even fucking stay on his head. Guys, relax. It wasn't like we were fucking. You know, you didn't really, really write sex on his head. It's just there. Yeah, the well, I gave such a shitty, hasty tattoo. Yeah. That, yeah, it was. It was basically equivalent to writing it into Sharpie. Yeah, but that's not. I mean, even if we did give a real head tattoo, that's what he wanted, it, and he's an adult that can make his, his own decisions. And now that he's part of our crew, we're gonna yeah. shape his life. He's already told Leo that he's gonna stop doing acid. Yeah. Yeah. And start cleaning up and maybe take shrooms occasionally, hopefully right. on shoots when right, the cameras right, roll. Right. Exactly. But even if none of that, even if we weren't trying to improve his life, it's like, whatever, we're doing what we think's fucking funny. It's bro -y right. humor. Yeah. If you can't handle it, go watch Cody Co. Right. Go watch Jake Paul. Right. Go watch fucking the, the Hype House TikTok videos. Rat Dick Danny Ralph, Mullen's not for you. Like, fuck off. I don't care. Rat Dick has never been fucking happier in his life, man. The guy's so happy now. If we can get him a phone that works, we could call in on the podcast all the time. I'd love to be know what the fuck that guy's doing all day, right? Yeah, with Rat Dick, I we talked about it this last time. We really drove it into the ground that we don't want him just to be no. a degenerate acid fiend. <clears throat> Absolutely and not. And we want to help his life. Yes. That's all let you do what you what comes naturally to you. Yes. I'll exactly. be I'll be like a guy with a pith helmet and a pair of binoculars on an African safari watching Rat Dick do acid and be himself. Right. But you know, if he's getting out of control, I'll tranquilize him. Yeah. And I know that you will pull that you will hit him right in the fucking neck. Because yeah. you will want it. Because he's a big boy. Honestly, he's kind of a big, strong guy. He was he's fucking big, taking guys down. Hey, what a fucking star he was! Even in the baseball video, yeah, dude, he was fucking amazing in the baseball video. <laughs> Running around with a bottle of vodka, blocking people's path to the base. Guys, guy knows what fucking sells, man. That guy's like a fucking YouTube fiend. It seems like people were loving that baseball video. It's a, it's a really good video, which proves a point that I, I think a lot of people have told you, and it's hard for you to kind of take in, is that. You can do something uh, pretty disorganized and pretty improvisational and make something that people really, really love. My thing for videos mm -hmm. is I like the format that we just did from January to now. And I'm going to take this week off, actually. I'm going to save the video I have in the can, the pickup video yeah. for the week following. Cool. I'm going to do videos in the little cycles like this, where there are three really concepty, elevated, scripted, complex videos. Yeah. Just to let people know I'm a goddamn badass. But then, also, I want to keep my improv chops sharp. I love it, man. So we can just go out and play a game of fucking baseball. It was it was awesome playing. And you can keep your improv chops sharp, and yep. you can assist in that game of baseball. Hell and yeah. make a good piece of content doing that, too. Hell yeah, man. It's it's fun creating on the road with you, too. You know, sometimes we do things that just, you know, based on your idea of the video, we, we branch off. It's fun, man. It's fun creating. We need to go do a worst town in America again. We do, man. I, I really would love that. That would be amazing if in the next month we could do one of those. Let's hop on a plane. I'm down, man. Let's go somewhere. I was looking at the least tourist, the least visited states in the union. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's Alaska, which is going to be a gotcha. tundra, frozen tundra at this yeah. time of year. Yeah. I say we go somewhere like North Carolina, North Ooh. Dakota, fucking Wyoming. A Wyoming, a really cool, yeah. That, those could be fucking freezing right now, so we might That's wait. True. Yeah, we That's might true. wait like a month. Whatever, we could, we'll we go could, somewhere could, south. We'll yeah, go to fucking some uh, shit town in New Mexico. Yeah, there's something like that would be great. We or go somewhere. Up, even up the coast, man. Even up the fucking. I know. said we get out of California for the I'm next down. worst town in America. Yeah we, could, yeah, we could probably just make it right into Oregon on a train, too. We wouldn't even need, we could do like a train video. Worst town in America. Train's a concept. Train, train's a concept, man. We, <laughs> we could, and it's cheap. You know, we there could probably. Are, dude, I was looking at Airbnbs in Oklahoma. Uh -huh. Oh, God, that's for a For $88 a night, you yeah, get a, mansion. a luxury penthouse in the center of downtown Tulsa. Fuck, yeah. That 
it's going to make it real easy yeah, to pick so up bitches we'd sell, shoot content. <laughs> we'd sell uh, a lot. Uh, well, we'd yeah, we'd pay for the tickets by saving money on the on the housing. Even the tickets would probably be pretty inexpensive. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Fucking airplane tickets are bumming me out though. Everything's five fucking hundred dollars. Yeah. One way, and then the other yeah. one's like two hundred. Yeah. But uh, I want to go to St. Louis because I know a guy out there who's in an amateur pro wrestling ring. Oh my god. That's, that's content. So that's so good. I'll and wrestle then, him. And then of course, um, drinking cores at the Bud Light or yeah, the Budweiser I factory. That, that would be unbelievable. Yeah. That would be unbelievable. And there's a, I mean, I believe with the elections, you have an idea for a Donald Trump video, right? We're going to tailgate voting for Trump. Yeah, I was thinking, can you can you see like a fucking pickup truck full of Coors Lights? We're just giving out the people Absolutely. For voting for Trump. I say Bud Heavy. That's the Bud American heavy, beer. Bud Heavy, Bud Heavy. Not Coors Light. Yeah, no, that's, we're doing, a, that's a banquet beer. Coors Light tastes like communism to me. Honestly, I love Coors Lights, man. It's like drinking soda water where you get, you know, you get a little lit. Budweiser is kind of shitty. We always What's your drink- favorite beer? Stella Artois. Oh, very nice. It's Belgian bur- Belgian beer. Belgians are the greatest at the bear making, maybe. They're a little too socialist for me. At least they will be uh, when I'm doing the Trump voting tailgate. Do you remember that girl? I'm not going to see any Stella Artois that day. Uh, the Belgian beers, yeah. Good one. I think I like uh, I like Corona, man. I'm just, yeah, I'm not, it's not because I'm Latino or anything, but I, a Corona Light is my favorite light beer. It's phenomenal. Corona, you take one sip, you start talking to somebody at the party, and you go to take another sip, and the bottle's empty. That's true, yeah. They go, they go down fast. They now. go down so fast. Yeah, Coronas are just fantastic. Mexicans fucking absolutely annihilate the beer world, man. Oh, even their shittiest beer, Tecate, still a fucking great beer. Virtually every Mexican beer is highly it's, enjoyable. It's so good, yeah. Pacifico, fucking, they're all good. Oh, March 30th, I'll indulge in all of them. Really? For are one you gonna night? Get, are you going to get drunk? I said, can I, yeah. Can I, can, I, can I be there? I might be very nasty. Listen, buddy, you've been very nasty to me this year, and I'd like that to change, in fact. Really? Yeah, yeah, I would. You've been fucking nasty, and I want our brotherly love again where we respect and love one another like brothers. I'm seeing if you had a black eye because you stepped into the sparring ring hurt by my comments on last week's episode. You trying to prove me wrong. fucking son of a bitch. All right, we'll sign out. Have a good defense. All right, guys. Your defense blows. My defense is great, dude. You can't develop defense from a half round. I have a shoulder defense. My shoulder. I'm very flexible. Yeah. I'm flexible. So the guy would go low, hit you once in the stomach. Maybe. You you're drop right. your hands. You're right. And then you take one in the I'm face. Probably, probably right. But then I'd fucking lose my fucking mind and beat the shit out of him. I'm honestly a little disappointed you didn't get sparring for me. Today. Why would you? You told me it's stupid to get in the head when you're a fucking thinking man. It's stupid. It's stupid that you're not going out of your way. To gain my respect back. Listen, you fucking asshole. <laughs> I better have your fucking respect, all right? It comes because and goes. I remember the fucking Mustang that I purchased and drove your ass up all the way to Sacramento and got a speeding ticket from an Asian guy in Ventura and then produced one of the greatest Danny Mullen videos in the history of the channel. What are you talking about? I rode a parade. Yeah. Well, I have the memory of a goldfish. Yeah, well, you fucking you remember, buddy. You need to rent me a new luxury you car. Remember, I, I, was, I was so nice to you when you're on that set of the Hambone Group, and you're just a Justin Bieber fucking little asshole. And I thought I looked at you and I said that guy has potential. And you were very nice. And I said, come to one of my shows. Yeah, we'll do a video. And then that video has over five hundred thousand views now. And that was when you had like thirty thousand subscribers you know it's disingenuous of you in that video what is the ucla video what's disingenuous that you chastise the beta kids because they quote have never even been in a fist fight before well listen but you've never been in one either i have been in fist fights they happen to be in grade school in your dreams actually in middle school i got in a fist fight too they're usually very wrestling like affairs not a lot of fucking landed punches but they were definitely battles with another man and then there were baseball yeah, pals. You know, I got into two baseball pals. I think you're mistaking your uh, after hours homosexual activity with men in the showers. Oh, is that what you think? fights. Is that what you think? I think. Or, I or maybe the homosexual activity that I witnessed you do with your good friend Adam Fu when you guys try to tie your penises. Not gay if you don't have a boner. Literally, you might have had a little bit of a boner. Buddy. Did not. Yes, you fucking did. There was blood rushing, and I fucking saw the Listen boner. to me. Is it physically possible?